Welcome to NTP Software's ongoing series on addressing the challenges that face storage administrators today. In this module, we'll discuss the approach to handling unwanted content in your storage environment. If you're like most of our customers, then you're constantly investing energy into ways of saving time, money, and reducing risk in your environment. We share these same concerns and are committed to helping you achieve these goals. As you already know, the task of maintaining your storage infrastructure is extremely time consuming, especially when you consider how much of that storage is inhabited by unwanted content. Gardner Group has even identified that 20 to 40 percent of content being stored on most networks is junk, no business value at all. The cost of this junk continuously multiplies in your environment through network backups, file archival, and maintenance, which leaves you with the added expense of purchasing storage when it's not needed. Along with the unwanted comes unauthorized content, which can easily make its way into your environment. You could be storing files like MP3s, JPEGs, WMVs, or hazardous material and not even know it until it's too late. One of the ways to reduce risk and accomplish your goal of saving time and money is through file blocking. By blocking unauthorized or unwanted files before they enter your storage environment, and by giving your users the knowledge to avoid issues even before they happen, you'll be able to gain full control of your storage infrastructure. NTP software provides QFS file blocking functionality, which allows you to create and enforce rules as well as control storage access in real time. We will now show you the solution that will immediately help your company save time, money, and reduce risk with very minimal impact on your user community. Let's take a look at the user experience in a file blocking policy using NTP Software QFS. In this case, we have a user named W. Boyd for a fictional company called Galactic Getaways. When W. Boyd tries to copy the Eagles Desperado.mp3, a media file as defined by our policy, they get blocked. In this case, we get an operating system message that says access denied. This is in spite of the fact that W. Boyd does have full access to the home directory and has full control. But the policy from QFS has prevented the user from doing this specific file action. This means that I can give the user full control to a resource or a share, but still prevent them from doing things that I think are unwise, unprofessional, unwarranted, etc. If you have the messenger service enabled in your environment, we can also send a messenger service pop-up. In this case, we say, QFS file control warning. This warning message was issued for attempting to save the file, the Eagles Desperado.mp3, and you'll receive an email shortly with additional information. Now, notice that the name of the file is in the message. We can put other variables like the location and other information that specifies exactly what operation caused this message to appear. This has a very powerful effect on the user because they know that they're being watched. They know that the system is monitoring what they're doing and that they can't do whatever they want to do. This is a business resource. Let's take a look at the email that gets sent to the user. In this case, we've gotten an HTML formatted email that tells the user everything that they need to know about what's going on. In this case, I can brand this with the company logo, with the intranet, with links, with policies, very customizable messaging. This message says your request to save the file named the Eagles Desperado that MP3 was denied because this folder doesn't allow you to save MP3 file types within it. And it lets the user know exactly why they got the denial, why they're not allowed to do it. But they might want more information. In that case, we provide the second line. If you believe you have received this message in error or want help in understanding how the system screens files, click help. We provide a help system as part of the solution that you can customize or use as is that gives the user a message that explains exactly why the file type was prohibited and what the message means. So let's take a look at the back end and how this actually all is configured. We see that the file blocking policy that we just triggered is actually defined at the highest level, but it's inherited down to the lower level at the server level. This means that I can set up one policy for all home directories across a very large enterprise and have them apply everywhere. In this case, the media blocking policy has a criteria tab, which allows me to specify things like multimedia files, or I can add specific file types or file names. So I can do things like asterisk.vbs, in which case it will look for the VBS extension, or I can do things like PST, but I can also pick from the predefined collections like executables, multimedia files, audio files, and there's MP3 files. Another feature of this file control policy is that I can base the policy not just on the file extension, but on the file name. So if I have a security document called sec asterisk dot doc, 
any file that meets that criteria can be blocked as well. This can allow me to have a system where I have some volumes that contain secure information and it will prevent the user from inadvertently copying it to the wrong location because that document name is specifically banned in those other locations. We also have other capabilities relative to identifying files. We can look inside zip files to make sure the person hasn't hidden their mp3s or other file types inside a zip file and we can even look inside a password protected zip file and we have the deep scan technology. Deep scan technology is what allows us to look inside the file at the headers to figure out that a file that's named .doc is actually an mp3 file. This can be turned on and off on an individual policy basis so it's very granular, very configurable. Under control options we have three different areas we can control. Read, write, and create. In each case we can specify whether or not we want the event logged and whether or not we want to allow or deny that operation. With the configuration we see here, I would be allowed to watch AVI files and MP3 files that exist in the environment, but not write or create new ones in the directories that are maintained with this policy. This means that people can view what's official, but not create their own libraries for iTunes. I can also go into Directories tab and specify cross-platform locations. In this case, we have vol, user vol, users asterisks, and d colon backslash users asterisks. We support the Solera, NetApp, and Windows Server environments, and so you can set one policy that applies to all of them. Under Manage Users and Groups, we can decide to restrict everyone or pick specific users and groups from Active Directory to restrict with this policy. And even if we restrict everyone, we can still use the Exempt Users and Groups tab to add a group of people who need to work with MP3s or who simply shouldn't be blocked from this policy. We also have another Recipients tab that allows you to specify who will receive the messages in addition to the user that actually filled out the data. One tactic from some of our customers is they don't actually block the user from doing anything. They actually allow them to do all things, but they log, write, and create new events. Then what they do is in the messaging, they'll tell the user that a copy of the message is going to their manager with the name of the file and then they can justify the file to their manager. Even without blocking the user, they're getting a chilling effect from people doing things that they don't want others to know. So as you can see, file blocking policies are quite granular and easy to configure in QFS. In this module, you experience the power of NTP software QFS which allows you to create and enforce rules and also control storage access in real time with very minimal impact on your user community. You know how much of the content in your storage environment is unwanted and how much you're affected by the cost of that content multiplying over and over. You're aware of the legal risk your company may unknowingly face by storing unauthorized materials on your network and how you can address and altogether avoid these issues using NTP software QFS file blocking functionality. Don't suffer with this problem any longer than you need to. Contact NTP Software to schedule a custom demo of our solutions. Join the thousands of companies that use NTP Software products to control and manage their storage environment.